today we are going to discuss about animal tissues we have already studied about the plant tissues over there you have studied that the tissues are basically dead in nature but here in animal tissues the cells are living and therefore the diversification is more than the plant tissues now animal tissues are of four type epithelial tissue connective tissue nervous tissue and muscular tissue look the diagram epithelial tissues where it is situated in different parts of our body epithelial tissues are also known as epithelium and they are present on entire body surface and even inside the body cavities as the diagram you can clearly see that they are also present in nasal and in mouth cavity too notice these different type of uh, different types of epithelium tissues they are of different shapes as well now the first one a simple squamous tissues they are basically rested upon the yellow or green color membrane we say it as basement membrane it separates the epithelial tissues with connective tissues it is present in the alveoli air sac of the lung and our body lining as well a body lining here means separation of body parts simple cuboidal epithelium simple over here means not in cluster or group it is because of its shape it is named as cuboidal it looks like a cuboid in structure they are present in kidney for the filtration now the c simple columnar epithelium it is basically present in the glandular gland and this glandular gland is present in the intestine to secrete hormones i mean endocrine or exocrine glands pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium the d1 they are those columnar tissues which are in cluster or in group as you can see in the slide they are basically present in respiratory tract stratified squamous epithelium a group of squamous epithelium and is present in esophagus our body is covered by this tissue along with single uh, squamous epithelium it also protects us now whatever we have discussed is in this slide about epithelial tissue where it is found and what is its function now look the different types of connective tissues connective tissues are divided into three parts fibrous skeletal and fluid fibrous tissue over here contains aerolar adipose tendon and ligaments skeletal bone and cartilage fluid blood and limbs fibrous connective tissues is generally also known as a fibro connective tissues because it serves as a packing material and stores energy for our body skeletal connective tissues it provides support to the body organs bones and cartilage and fluid connective tissues which transport nutrients in help in respiration process they are blood and limbs all right now come on the next slide we will discuss look over there uh, look over the different type of connective tissues which are there in the body all right the first one is 
the loose connective tissue A. Now it means that they are present under our skin which gives skin elasticity. It also act uh, to absorb shock and bind tissues together. They are of two types, aerolar tissues. They are the proper connective tissues which separate skin from muscles. They absorb shock, shock and provide cushions to the body by stretching it. Whereas adipose tissues are to store energy in the form of fat, insulated which provide insulation in our body. They are basically present behind eyes, kidney, heart, abdomen and buttocks. Now the C part, blood. It is composed of plasma which is pale yellowish in color and this plasma contains blood cells. Function of blood, it helps in digestion of food and oxygen to all bo body parts. It removes waste from the cell to the kidney, regulate temperature, protect body against infection Tran and it also transport hormones to all body part. All right. Now this cell, blood cells is made up of, it, it, it consists of three different cells. RBC, WBC and platelets. RBC is also known as erythrocytes which contains which is having enucleated means lack of nucleus. They are red in color because it contains hemoglobin. They are 7 micron in size. In our body they are present around 4 to 5.5 million per ml. The function of RBC is to combine with oxygen and form oxyhemoglobin and transport oxygen to all body cells. WBC uh, white blood cells also known as leukocytes which defends the body against infection and increases immunity. It is around 5000 to 6000 per ml in our body. Platelets is also known as thrombocytes, very minute cells. They are around 2 to 3 lakhs per ml. It helps in clotting the blood. Now blood comes under the fluid connective tissue. There is one more which is not here mentioned. It is lymph. It is generally a straw colored or pale yellowish in color because of the absence of RBC. It is not red in color. They form a lymphatic system as a blood form a circulatory system. The lymph helps in the exchange of nutrients and gases between blood and tissues and also like blood it provides immunity against infection. Now about fibrous connective tissues which we say it as fibro connective tissues which acts as pa uh, packing material in our body. They are of two types tendons and ligaments. Tendons are the elongated fiber which which is attached or supports the joint between muscle and bones. Tendons are strong, they are non-flexible and made up of white fibrous connective tissues. Ligaments support the joints between bones. They are elastic and flexible in nature and made up of yellow fibrous connective tissues. Now about cartilage. Cartilage are present at the end of the bones. They are non-porous because they don't contain blood vessels which makes no free space. They are flexible because their tissues are made up of protein and sugar. Their cells are known as chondrocytes. Cartilage are found in movable joint, nose, external ear and trachea as you can see in the figure 
helps to resist mechanical stress and provide flexibility in the movement of bones now about bones bones are hard but porous because they contain blood vessels which creates space among it the cells are made up of osteocytes and the cells have collagen which contains calcium phosphate bones helps to give structure to a body and also protect our delicate organ now in this picture you can see that different uh, blood uh, along with blood vessels you can see something new to you it is the green which is over here generally it's a, a pale yellowish in color that is the limb all right now about the muscular tissue all right now we will discuss the third part of the t uh, animal tissue that is muscular now what is muscular tissue a contractile tissues which help the body movement they are the tissues found in animal which help by contracting their thereby applying force to different parts of the body let us discuss different types of muscular tissues skeletal muscular tissue which is on the uh, on the app over there they, they are also uh, act as a voluntary muscles because they depends on our uh, will and the rest to cardiac and the smooth muscles they are involuntary in nature they do not work under our will all right now here look the figure and see the difference in their shapes now skeletal muscle tissue which we say is at striated muscles they are not connected with each other isn't it like in a branch way so they are unbranched the shape is basically of cylindrical in shape and you can see the blue dots which are there they are being nucleus so in this one you uh, you find multiple nucleus present we say it as multi nucleated all right now look the second one that is cardiac muscle tissue they are connected with each other like branched shape isn't it and and they they uh, and each is having a single nucleus you can see the blue dots so single nucleus means uni nucleated they are present in heart that is in the wall of heart third one smooth muscles or unstrated muscles it's a uh, different from rest of the two isn't it the shape is like a spindle brought from the middle and sharp to the ends one spindle contains one muscle uh, one nucleus only we can say is a uh, uni nucleated they are not connected like a branch so we can say it as unbranched all right now in this slide we will understand that where they are located and what is their function the skeletal muscle is basically present on the move, uh, moving part of the body as you can see in the diagram they are present in the limbs face neck tongue and diaphragm the skeletal muscle improve motion range like lifting our hands walk play eating or writing something it also manage muscle pain or cramp cramp is uh, the contraction of muscle it helps to defense uh, it helps in the injury to recover it reduces edema edema means swelling and it helps in the healing of injuries now smooth muscles they are basically present in the visceral organs 
like stomach, intestine, urinary bladder, uterus and blood vessels. Its function is helping in digestion and breathing, reduces cramping, acid reflexes means acidity in our body, fighting against infection. Cardiac muscle is basically present in the wall of the heart only. It helps the combat inflammation like smooth muscles, helps to reduce swelling like skeletal muscle, increase EF capacity means it increases heart rate so that heart can work properly. Overall we can say that it can regulate the heart. All right. Now, the nervous tissue. Now, this nervous tissue, you can see the figure. It, can, it is having cell body, it is having nucleus, it is having dendrites, axon and nerve ending. We will discuss each one in the next slide. Now, cytone, we say it as cell body. It is the cell body with a central nucleus surrounded by cytoplasm and the function of cytone is it receives electrical signals from other neurons through dendrites. All right? Now dendrons, short fiber rising from the cell body. It carries electrical signals towards the cell body. Dendrites. A tree like extension and the beginning of neuron. It receives message that can be passed on the next cell. Exon. It is a long part of a human neuron or a nerve cell. It transmits electrical signal from cell body to nerve ending or exon terminal. Exon terminal or nerve ending. Present at the end of the exon. Function receive signal from axon and send to the other dendrites of a neuron all right now whatever we have studied it is a summary of this this chart can help you to understand it so thank you